there are six stages to potato growth, so let me break it down for you. Phase one is sprouting. The Cuna King sprouted onto the scene about eight years ago when Old McDonald decided to bring the program to life. Phase two is emergence. This stage is all about the development of the plant's foliage. Once we reached our first bowl game in year three, the league took notice of our emergence. Phase number three, that's all about tuber initiation. Underground, the stems develop. For Cuna, the proof is in the pudding. The development is in our pipeline. It's been full steam ahead with some of our Hallmark commits that shape this program into what it is today, like Mitch. Phase four is tuber bulking. The most critical stage for potato yield, it's all about beefing up the size and weight. Safe to say the team has been beefing up with some top tier classes and top tier talent. Officially in phase five, we've reached maturity. Our potato kings just came off a national championship run after all, which means this batch of potatoes is ready for the final stage, harvest. Starting year eight as world beaters, 92 overall across the board. We learned a thing or two about the squad, like starting quarterback Sheriff Flood is the man. And better yet, we continue to bring in new talent like Byron Denson. Impact player, true freshman, 81 overall, fifth in the depth chart. The same can be said in the running back room. When you have an 80 overall true freshman in Lee Alawali and he's fourth in the chart, you're doing something right. Better yet, I'm excited for guys like Romeo Talton, 99 speed, and elite dev Zari Brown to lead this room going forward. I could spend all day highlighting the new players like Angel Suggs, but there are just so many names to get to and they're all gonna plug in in a position to make a difference in just a year or two. 16 and one last season, this team looks for ways and how they can stretch the limit of what's possible. And we'll start off this year doing it with three rivalry matchups, the Gold Rush Classic, the Harvest Heritage Showdown, and the Gem State Grudge Match right here in Boise, Idaho. One last non-conference game against Clemson before taking on a Big 12 schedule. First team, All-American Leon Osling, and first team, Pat Knox, Trayvon Beard, three guys atop the chart. From a second team perspective, we have Matt Fogg, and so that rounds out four first team All-Americans, but first team All-Conference selections, there's plenty. I still believe there's a lot to figure out before this team builder series is said and done. Will we go back to back? Maybe the Big 12 is a little too small. Push comes to shove, we might get a bid to test ourselves in the SEC, one of the most competitive conferences in all of football. Regardless, there's a lot in store for us to figure out this episode, so sit back, relax, soak up with King Sponge, and hit that subscribe button. As you can imagine, winning a national championship did wonders to our prestige, and now the list is off the charts here with prospects willing to take their talents to CUNA, Idaho. We're getting to a point where the world feels like our playground, a ton of five-star talent open to being recruited. Melvin Bunting was so ready, it's a done deal, pen to paper. Gold Rush Classic, it's time to throw down. Man, I remember when the Cowboys were giving us a run for our money. Now with a sold out crowd in our first game of year eight, the only one that's gonna be running are the Cowpokes when they get denied all day long. What a sack to kick off the defensive stand. It's a new season of Cuna King football. Ball in our hands, handing it off to Eagles on just a simple inside zone chunk play. It's an Eagle flood, 15 Eagles, number one flood. Let's get this party started in here. As a true freshman quarterback leading this team to a national championship, the sky is the ceiling. I literally expect every play to feel like child's play taken on any opponent this year. Minus maybe Clemson in just a couple weeks, but I'll never look past any rivalry game no matter what year it is. We got hounded. What's open flood can make some magic happen. Instead, we're gonna have to make it rain on this pass play to Ham intercepted. I got tolerance for maybe one. I know we gotta get it out the system. By no means that should be the norm for the fifth best team in the nation according to the preseason ranks. What should be the norm is this right here, extending out to the right, flood dancing around and cashing in. Wearing the all golds, we're in search of that pot. One thing leading to another, it was never really a competition as we predicted predicted after all. A little rusty to begin the campaign, but that is no worries. Pretty commonplace for a lot of teams. As soon as we get the unit pumping, it's over for the league. Third and four, we got an out to Smythe broken up there. Little cowboy defense late in this one. Like a flood, we will come through and wash everything you've worked for away. Eagles, I'm looking at you, man. Fly home, cash in, touchdown. Just plain and simple domination. Wyoming traveled all the way out here to Idaho to get smacked. Eagles having a really good game here, but we're going to let the freshman get a tote. 
Seven yards. Not bad for your first collegiate carry. If you can average that clip every single time you touch the ball, you'll have a successful career. That's a spud tacular six from the tight end. Only week one, and I'm already pulling out the bake them up, mash them up, boil it. Put it on a skew, stir those potatoes around and round. Whatever your preferred method of devouring some scrumptious potatoes, our spud studs got the job done in decisive fashion. Speaking of spud studs, so many five stars making the right choice choice, putting us at the top of their list. Morgan Kloss here, five-star gem linebacker, 92 speed. Then we got five-star Slater with 93 throw power, 93 excel, good accuracy, decent speed platinum extender the quarterback room is loaded but why not add another just like a loaded potato it hits from time to time and quincy larock here would be another big boy to add to the offensive line happy to see us winning on a lot of these battles one i really want to set my eyes on here is coco the six foot deep threat from lancaster 96 speed 96 excel platinum shifty badge he's gonna be a human joystick to user rounding out the list we got a five-star gem in carney and he'll leave nothing but carnage in his his wake 92 hit power 94 strength 85 power moves old mcdonald back at it again with back-to-back -back rival games this time it's the harvest heritage showdown both squads 1-0 in the young season and we're back in cuna idaho looking over the middle we're gonna go ahead and hit this one in stride still struggling to find another receiver like vilma we have a handful of dudes that are willing to take on the challenge but they're just not quite vilma level old mcdonald's all about development so he'll continue to put in work developing this group of receivers just not getting much separation against umass dbs right now we'll continue to work at that see if we can wear and tear them down spruce catch and run first down little play action here little little bush league action here on the play action db extraordinaire forest mon was all up in our mon good play all around now we'll have to work on this third down deliver a strike Smythe, my guy another two tight end set surveying surveying and saying forget it flood in there forecast looks a bit wet maybe it's just the sheriff cracking the 90 overall threshold for both offense and defense i think the defense is definitely one of the primary benefactors and yes i know i know only umass and wyoming in the early slate but we are not letting anyone score on us it's just a beautiful sight takes any pressure whatsoever off the offense and lets them get out there to have fun third and long we're gonna hand it off to eagle seeing if he can get a hole couldn't really find one but fourth and 15 is more manageable than fourth and 21 am i right bingo tossing one up to the corner Smythe secure handed another touchdown tally it to his name baked potatoes never tasted any better than right now about to pat it in just even more before the halftime has arrived dual threat extraordinaire i'm running out of adjective to describe this team if i'm a betting man i'd bet that the cuna kings are a surefire lock for the college football national playoff championship run no doubt but crazier things can and usually do happen even with performances like this 35-0 someone out there could come and wreck our plans every dog has their day they got something and we'll go ahead and get it right on back touchdown Cuna. fourth and two up the middle just handing it off at this point in the fourth quarter down by 30 this is what it has come down to am i right like desperation good times keep on rolling for this sold out cuna idaho crowd umass was just next on the hit list two rivals squared away one more to go gem state grudge match week let's go show that the potatoes are golden just 20 minutes away from boise 86 overall across the board this will be our toughest test yet as boise state usually does put a good roster together but say hello to my little friend let's coin a new term here all stars nah all spuds spud stars taking the field every single player on this team is a contributor and a big reason why we can win this game this is where the fun begins with flood playing on the blue field for the first time in his career at midfield on the bronco dumping it to the drag it's ham ready to go ham bone on these guys it's great it's like a thanksgiving feast you got ham and potatoes a classic dish just like a classic move by eagles getting the first fresh drive going out to Smythe, he's got it all things a smashing success to start off the game until that reverse play got blown up jose knight on the stop 14 and a half sacks last year you got to keep an eye out on the line for that guy 
keep him accounted at all times. And they literally didn't. He was the one that disrupted that last one too. Out to the right side of the field here. Blue turf ahead. Probably could have dumped something off. Instead, it's fourth and nine picking it up with Spruce. There are a good amount of Spruce trees in the Idaho State. So no doubt he feels right at home with that pickup. Second and goal will go ahead and dump to Ham. No, it's a flooded Ham show. He should have fell into the end zone. Instead, he dumps down at the half yard line. Just go get the rest with Portilla touchdown. Opening drive success. Looking for some more of that here on defense against Boise State. Holding them there to fourth down. Fake touch here. It's a QB power. No one picked up the block. Not sure what that was all about. So we'll go ahead and try it again. Get the easy yard. Haven't seen Eagles in a little while. I wonder if he is okay or shaking something off. Oh, no, just kidding. He's back on the field. Little bit of committee carousel last couple of plays. Just need to find a way to get in there. I don't really care who does it. Not going to happen right now. Maybe a little tomfoolery is all we need. Fake jet touch. Give me the blocks. Denied, and the grudge match continues here at Albertson Stadium. Losing by three points, the grudge match is getting all too real. Fourth ranked in the nation, a lot on the line. If Boise State knocked us off, I could practically guarantee they would be ranked. Couple solid heads up plays here from the running back Eagles in the backfield. Gonna draw PI on that big bomb. 19 got all up in our grill. Definitely need to make every positive play count. Another first down. Got the clock down to about 10 seconds here. And what an interception. Bronco defense held up at the end. A thrilling game for the fans, but not looking too good for the Kings. It was Teven Leota on that last one. Had to make his presence felt bull rushing right on through. 13-7 stadiums coming alive. Down by six. We want a touchdown at least. As if there's more you can do than a touchdown. What I'm trying to say is you can't settle for three points. Need our best stuff for the end here. Saving it all for last. After a great first two games of the season, this has been Flood's worst. Couple costly interceptions. Not looking so sharp. Need this third down spruce will you come through big man secured it little halfback draw to eagles gets the blocks to hold he's got another one matt fogg getting injured i can't have that one of our best preseason second team all american pretty deep there on offensive line so i expect the backup to play comparable because yeah with a quad strain he's not going to be able to come back for the rest of the game pressure dropped us come on o-line shore up those holes for us I need your contributions here in a big way sky is falling for a moment for flood when it rains it pours on the offensive line but oh my goodness eagles was open my man literally had a step and i couldn't connect before the pressure came home now fourth and 21 this is the game on the line gonna throw this one undercut by the db let's at least tackle this fool so we can burn our last two timeouts and never mind that was one of our worst games in the last few years anything goes in a rivalry matchup and boise state continues to have our number the city of boise reminds cuna idaho that after all is said and done boise is big bro Cuna, little bro. They don't even care about the fact that we won a national championship. That didn't stop them. The unfortunate news didn't stop Lehman from committing four-star gem tight end. We'll need that with Spruce graduating this season. In the 12-team playoff bracket, one loss won't hurt us and knock us out completely, but we gotta get our act together. Just like we're trying to get our act together with a lot of these prospects, schedule visits, do the right thing. The Boise State Broncos exposed us just a little bit. Clemson is gonna be even tougher of a test on paper. Sixth in the nation. The Tigers are a good squad, but this is not a rivalry matchup, so I think we can get back to our old ways. Welcoming the Tigers in with open arms in this wet and rainy Cuda Idaho field. Blitz came in and took him down. Leota, soggy and wet, trying to do a dance with him. What was that? Grabbing his hands, looking for a tango. Dropping one against the Broncos, not good at all. Arguably Sheriff Flood's worst start as a collegiate quarterback. But you see the forecast just as much as I do. It's rainy with a forecast of flooding, flash flooding. Cats usually aren't the best at swimming, so I recommend they get to cover or high ground ASAP. Yet to really stretch anyone out deep on our offense, we continue to struggle. We'll definitely have our moments, but we're still struggling to find a surefire number one target. Fourth and 21, getting sacked an awful lot. Not a good sign, but this one to Oliveira is redemption all the 
way touchdown the quarterback for clemson's number 20 so that's a little funny maybe he was an athlete running back or something and he got converted to quarterback he's a good looking lefty slinger that was a dot. Second quarter, the rain keeps falling and flood keeps on churning. Couple minor setbacks here, but nothing to detour our guy from running down this field and getting some first downs. Looking to Eagles here to carry the rock and cut it up field. Good clip from him today so far, so good. How did he just pick that? Well, okay, I mean, that was probably a danger zone type pass, but I thought Spruce had the step. Out here witnessing number 20, the lefty just continue to make good play after play. Not gonna do it here when you're going up against the first team All-American Pat Knox. He must not have read the scouting report because Pat Knox holds it down like Fort Knox. And we are not gonna read any report, just gonna go for it on fourth and 12. When we look back at the recap of the game, it's gonna be moments just like this, where we realize we made some mistakes, no doubt. Oh my goodness, what a run from Flood. How did he not just take it all the way in? He really broke like three, four tacklers, yet couldn't finish. Grit, determination, all things we believe in out here in CUNA, Idaho. What a touchdown. Eagles ties this thing up. Gonna need all hands on deck in this fourth quarter if we're gonna overcome Clemson. Trust me, that is what we're hoping for. Get it out. Chun on the defensive line, three sacks today. Will someone cover that man just a little better after all, please? Spruce. Yes, it's the Spruce truce coming through. Remember, we found that truce in the offseason after he wanted to leave. I said, no, 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 not so fast. We have a starting spot for you. Oh my goodness. Chun with his fourth sack of the game. Even more embarrassing, I couldn't throw the ball away. So it's like third and insane. This is it. Thankfully, defense was able to hold and we have a last chance to get points. With a minute 30, I think that's plenty of time to get down this field and make things happen why not let it fly because we have an open lane we can scramble into cutting it down field to the 20. flipping the script we're down here all of a sudden in just one play Oliveira, excuse me sir you gotta hang on it might be rainy yes but that is a need it type play just like eagles i needed that out of you buddy feeling a little more confident right here i just chewed clock down to 30 seconds because if i score don't want to give Clemson any more chances. Now I'll turn two clock off. Back to the line we go. Hand off to Portilla. Up the middle. Stuffed. Little more urgency. Hurrying it up with a slant. Middle call. Yes, we got him over the middle. And no, we actually did not. Which I'm surprised to see since it looked wide open until number three. Really sold out on the interception. And it just got worse. What a dagger pick six as time expires he just made himself a highlight real type play got himself solidified for the nfl draft because he just showed us up like that yeah i'm kind of heartbroken no real excuses here i mean that was terrible felt a little pressure because of the time but really just a bad decision when it all said and done and we don't want to keep getting used to bad decisions costing us games because all of a sudden after winning a national championship we have more losses through four weeks than we did all last year go ahead and slate brett slater in as your next potato king as well as rashawn heflin two top tier four star gems coming home and man, this was not the start I was hoping for. Two and two, still in the top 25 conversation, but we have a lot of work to do going into Big 12 play. On the bye week, we got good news. Landed our first five-star of the year out of New Orleans. It's a center to hold down the offensive line. Seems like an area needing improvement after all the sacks. But the worst part about losing to Clemson was that a couple big five-star guys that we were looking at commits to Clemson instead of us. Not just two, make it three, a five-star gem DT as well. In addition, losing a a couple others to Ohio State are dwindling our prospects and fast. Big 12 conference play by no means is going to get easier on us as West Virginia is 4-0 through the young season. They want to keep that alive. Mountaineer country is West Virginia mountain mama let's go ahead and give these lads a run things not going exactly to plan to start this one off turnover floods coughing it up west virginia looking to add to their 7-0 lead you get the sense that it's just building up like a dam two weeks in a row of losing it's all gonna come flooding out here in one of these games and when that happens the sheriff will be rounding up any unusual suspects mountaineers wildcats 
anyone in the way. West Virginia means business, 14 apiece. We have a blow by here from Smythe. Can he keep up the pace? No dice on the last one, and it's about to be no dice on this one. Audibling changing up the formation to all go. Let's see if that catches these guys napping. And you know what? It just might if Spruce can beat the DB. I think it might be time for us to talk. Are the CUNA Kings fraudulent? what happened to this team and at the moment i'm less concerned about the defense more concerned about the offense you're giving them a 92 rating for what seriously tempted to make a quarterback change as we're now going on three games of pedestrian like results that's not what i expect from a national championship caliber quarterback but for that very reason that's why i keep him in he has proven he can win on the biggest stage he is that type of quarterback let's go down by three i can't stress how important making a stop here really is is it's going to dictate the rest of this game with second and goal i can expect a heavy dose of handoffs as they'll look to continue to chew this clock down to the final second third and goal snapping drawing it is going to go to 18 and he stopped fourth and goal if we can block a kick that's an extra icing on top of the cake but we can't so we're forced to go get a touchdown of our own this is it this is the drive we have to put our head into it and make sound decisions. Can't settle for three, need to go for six. I'm gonna take my guy Eagles here any day of the week and then scan the environment here for a all go. Look at that press beater. It's Stevens coming down with a great play. All of a sudden in West Virginia territory threatening, we have a first and goal practically. Can run a zone fake jet, hand it back off. There's the, f nope, not quite the first down. Third and inches, gonna need to step up ourselves and take this thing to fourth down everything on the line right here money spruce for the win back and forth battle some mistakes here and there but when all said and done cunis finally going to get themselves back on the win column barring an unforeseen nightmare here two seconds left one second he's gonna go deep triple coverage someone just step in and get it down to the ground west virginia falls to the Potato Kings. 1-0 in Big 12 Conference play. Folks, go loco for Coco. We're bringing in a real spud stud. Lives up to the five-star hype. And you know who else has also been living up to the hype? It's Prime Times Buffaloes. Spuds, Buffaloes in the beautiful state of Colorado. Rocky Mountain region, great scenic views, high elevation, low oxygen content. Let's see what Prime's all about. 13 takes the carry. He's gonna just walk it into the end zone. Easy peasy. It's prime time holding up the Shadur watch. What an intense back and forth match to start the first quarter. It's 14 apiece and we're gonna dump the fullback small. Just steps out. On the verge of making this thing a 21-14 matchup. It's a high scoring affair. The fresh she couldn't find pay dirt, so it's back to Eagles. Tried and true. Get in there. Eagly making a splash in Boulder. 19th ranked in the nation. I don't want to say our hopes that the playoffs are over, because if we can win out the Big 12 Conference and that national championship, Big 12 championship, I should say, the path to the national championship will look clear. Starts off by making the textbook read eagles walking in doing the rest for a moment primetime had me believing that his squad was gonna go toe for toe but i guess they didn't read the report on eagles dude has been going crazy and what did i say it was building up like a dam about ready to burst and this is the result flooding in progress speaking of flood let's go ahead and call a flood play right here on the money to Stevens. This next pass and completion will put him over 300 passing yards, five touchdown passes in the first half. Suddenly I'm starting to feel better against five and one CU. Dropping a few key games, this is a atonement for what we've done. Gallimore to Spruce, make it 49 points. Love to see that and love to see the backup Gallimore come in, get the job done. Pinch hit for Flood there and did his job. I'll have to keep that in mind that if things ever go south so bad in a season, we have a capable backup. Offensive line was non-existent, even with a 97 overall All-American did not stop the defensive line rush on that last one. Prime time got served up in a major way in this one, 56-28. We don't always pat it on, but I wanna make sure that they really felt our presence in this one, this game. Yeah, our team's hot again. Glad we got all sorted out. It was 21-21, zero in the third, and then another 20 piece in the fourth flood. What a performance. Right back to the man I knew he could be, seven TDs. In that last one against CU, Kerry Forrester was about that action. Flood was too 
two offense and defense really harmonized national player of the week honors let's keep it moving unfortunately biting the bullet on some recruits lately we're losing out on a good amount of guys got a fair share of them that we're putting in work on but yeah not a happy camper with some of the decisions they're making kansas state iowa state call it farmageddon well cuna and iowa state call it spud again in. the roadshow across the big 12 continues cuna has been on the road for weeks in a row now itching to get back home but we ain't coming home unless we get that sweet sweet w wearing the cursive script and gold unis because this potato's on fire i said this potato's on fire first down flood lost the star underneath his name after some rough performances but after national player of the week honors i expect him back in full force iowa state two and four on the season we're four and two this should be a game that we can handle little rpo slant denied at the line buddy just smacked that thing down with authority he was wide open if it weren't for that play but We'll go ahead and go to Spruce anyway and get that six we need. Offense, defense, clicking. We got a safety and made another touchdown out of it. What could possibly go wrong at this point? The way Cuna has been coming alive in the last game and a half, it could be over before it's already started. Like Drake's album, if you're reading this, it's too late. If you're seeing this, it's too late. Your spud is already baked, mashed, cooked, boiled spoiled the iowa potato farm is rotten which is why you should only get your product from famous idaho they got the best stuff if you are sleeping under a rock i'm telling you now but if you've been sticking with us since the start of the series you already know that and for all the real ones out there that have been cooking with us as the series winds down let me know your favorite player of all time in cuna king's lore of course as these guys have come a long way one thing that's also come a long way is the kicking staff nailing 46 yard balls down the middle for atwell truly a beautiful sight brings a tear to any farmer's eye only good news to report back on here in spudageddon one more touchdown and we can go ahead and get the press all fired up start writing your articles now an interesting note will be made in said article the backups didn't even come in when up 40 to 6 Ames, iowa say goodbye we're not going to be coming back for the rest of the year they're two and five we're five and two on the up and up another day another light six Woo. all right it's been a sprint through the first half of the season to recap five and two two costly losses to clemson and our gem state grudge but all cylinders ago in the big 12 right now it's gonna get a whole lot tougher undefeated utah undefeated baylor on the radar atop the big 12 four teams have not lost yet baylor ourselves tcu and utah with now what i just realized a bunch of other winning teams as well k-state KU, West Virginia, Cincinnati. It's really going to come down to the end of the year. In the background, we continue to get commits like it's nothing. I really think Old McDonald's built something here that'll last for eons. NIL dollars will never be a problem with billion dollar potatoes. Old McDonald's even switching up his tactics for every commit that comes. He's giving them an actual piece of a golden potato worth $100,000 a pop. Low key should be illegal because it's kind of like a bribe, but hey, NIL is changing the landscape and so is old McDonald. Guess the cat's out of the bag if it was a secret. It's been all over social media. I mean, people are posting when they're visiting CUNA, Idaho, touring the Golden Potato Farm. You know what's also out of the bag? Coleman interception. I feel like on just one play there, I can already wave Houston goodbye. They're not about it if they're making silly mistakes like that. Clearly, Old McDonald needs to do less talking, more play to show for his words. Because losing 7-0 to Houston and they're in our red zone is just not a good look. Any given Saturday in college football, I understand that. But seriously, this is a game we don't want to drop. We have even our arguably tougher opponents after this. Houston set aside for a moment a couple undefeated teams making their way in town we're not looking sharp for that but that's the problem flood and old mcdonald are looking too far ahead the schedule looked menacing that they just looked straight past houston and wrote them off well they want to prove us wrong into the red zone looking for our first points in this one spruce could not hang on no time like the present two minute drill 
I want it all. And so does Stevens touchdown. Little worried in the first couple of quarters, but I think we're continuing to prove that we're capable of scoring at a blink's notice. In progress, flipping the script. That's what it's all about. Smythe burns the DB. And you know what? It's tied up just like that. Final five seconds left in the first half, scrambling out to the right, looking in stride. It's intercepted, but who cares? Let's go to the second half. Now down by a touchdown here in the third third quarter. We're going to tie it right back up, but it could have been more. Winding down to the end of this one, this is put up or shut up time. Tevin's all about it so far. He's looking really good from the linebacking position. I may be mistaken, but I believe he's a converted edge rusher that was once an outside linebacker. I do know he's got a star underneath his number for a reason, so we can keep calling him anytime we need it. Really could have used the defense on that one. Vander does score. Thinking he just put up a Heisman highlight let's go ahead and show him what a real heisman candidate quarterback looks like if we were able to cut down on interceptions receiver in motion oh he's so wide open just gotta hit him in stride stevens gives us the lead right back we scored within 10 seconds which i'll come out and say that's not always a good thing they have a good opportunity here to pick up the yards 35 seconds left up by three houston looking to get in the field goal range they're all out of timeouts but they're really close to the goal to go their goal is just about 20 yards away but it fourth and seven it's all on the line sacked again game changing pressure on the defensive line in that final stand 31 28 victorious Bravo to Cuna for turning it around with a four game win streak and landing this five star. Looking and feeling pretty good going into the final stretch. Another national player of the week recognized, it's Willingham. And now the mighty has fallen. Utah once undefeated, lost a game. Let's show them what two losses feel like. Utes another really successful team in the Pac-12. When they went defunct, they came over to the Big 12. Excited to see how they do in the fall. But honestly, I think they're gonna stay behind my cats, Kansas State should have this conference on lock. Totally not a biased opinion. Cats aren't the only one gonna be clamping down on some Ute cheek. We're gonna also clamp down here, Cuna King style, bake up these potatoes in the Salt Lake area. Stars litter this defense and for good reason. You don't just get a star under your name for a show. You get it because you're certified a baller. Landry's like that. And with that spark, we're in two the opponent territory. Third down, Lumen Smythe on a corner route to the corner of the end zone. Stacking the box, stacking everyone. It's a fumble and a blunder from Sheriff. Redemption was not too far behind. A second chance stuck in this angle here. I think that was a good throw. When you see it from that perspective, you realize that pass was truly on the money. Something special. Spruce at least hangs on the second time around. Got a little motion to the outside here. Looks like a slant stick. I've seen this play before in some playbooks. Worked really well here. It's a battle the Utes want. It's a battle they got. Ain't no way we're gonna go down without swinging. On this flood play, flood fits the window. Pretty impressive. The Utes have been able to hold our quarterback to only 100 passing yards in this one, but it's all all gonna go for not as we score it right here taking the lead and not looking back we're gonna go full steam ahead with this offense it seriously rains cats and dogs everything just comes out of the woodworks all at once stevens house call all of a sudden 28 to 10 who is this guy after all walking up into utah thinking he can make magic happen hide your fans Hide your mascots when you're facing CUNA, Idaho. They're in danger of converting. It's all too commonplace to see this team cook. And as we continue to bake more and more potatoes, that was really crispy. We're just running away with it, and defense is also stepping up in a major way. I noticed some Utah Ute players are from the state of Idaho. We're going to have to do all we can to make sure they stay local. I think as a national championship winner, we present a compelling case. First one to do it in Idaho is just another feather in our cap, which now that I think about it is exactly why Boise State beat us in the Gem State grudge match. They were most definitely salty about our chip. They fought so many years and for so long just to get to a place where they win Fiesta Bowls and fall just short because there was no committee back then. No 12-team playoff to ever give them a chance. In the new look era of college football. CUNY Kings, a lock to really get in. 
in Boise State on good years can get themselves right in there as well. Got the upper hand on Utah and never looked back. It's a different case for Baylor 10 and 0 on the season. They're undefeated and looking to continue it here. We have the advantage of bringing them onto our home turf, but they clearly have the advantage of being one of the hottest teams in college football. You definitely couldn't expect CUNA to stay down on their defense tour. I didn't really expect Baylor to be up here as well being talked about and let alone a strong candidate for the playoffs. There are senior quarterbacks on the Heisman watch list, and that is a big reason why they're here. Big reason we can continue to do what we do. It's the Spruce Truce. Third and three, Ham, our other tight end, picks up just enough. Successful smooth operation capped off here with a touchdown, 7-0. First drive, we're in. Potato Kings up. Bears looking to answer back. Someone check on Gammon on the ground over there. He's still on his knees. This could be the game Yusef here loses the Heisman vote. I won't speak on it because I don't want to jinx our chances in this one, but he's off to a rough start and we're off to a good one. Second quarter action. Well, Sheriff, what do you say we go ahead and put him away? Spruce, truce. We have a truce. Start talking about CUNA Idaho like it's the toughest place to play because that's what we're doing to this Baylor staff. One of the smallest schools in terms of seating out here. Before that interception, it was going entirely our way. The fans were getting into it. Now there is life. Maybe, just maybe the Bears are onto something. Forcing the issue here. Fourth and goal. Read option. He's in. Yusef. Two can play at that game, sir. You want to get on the board? Well, I'll go ahead and take it right back. Getting into crunch time. They pick up the fourth down. Desperately needed it. And if they don't get this fourth and 12, you can practically kiss their chances. Good night interception finishing touches going into it right here eagles up the gut blown block still down to the one undefeated no more go ahead and tally that loss into baylor's stat line the better team showed up in this one 38 20 overcame some major obstacles and jimmy alonzo is the prize five star run stopper on this hot streak the offense got a plus two overall boost 94 that's what awaits the arizona wildcats in their 86 overall defense in the rain even better right up our alley in our element. Arizona pressing all the right buttons early in this game, but like we've seen many others, it's a marathon, not a sprint. As we sprint away from doom, that DB was out for blood. Go ahead and scratch right back. Spruce tree. I'm sorry, he didn't score because I didn't call him by his proper nickname. Spruce, truce. Open sesame, third time's a charm. There it is. Just like the Utes and many before the Wildcats, we are making our way at the end of the second. You thought we were down 16-3. Well, I implore you, check again, good sir. Scrambling like it's a playground out here. Flood. Iconic. Hit the Heisman pose. That was well deserved. He scrambles out to the right, realizes there's a man there, goes back left, up the gut, cuts to the right, breaks two, finishes it off. After that Heisman-like play, I bet you could see where this one was headed. 31-16, victory formation down goes Arizona. Old McDonald is on a tear. Final game of the regular season in Lawrence, Kansas. The Jayhawks really don't stand much of a chance. After two early season blunders, the CUNY Kings have really hit their stride and the Jayhawks are on deck to get this action. Rock, chalk, eat a potato. Checking out the new stadium here in Kansas. This is pretty cool. I think it's the first time I've actually played on it because every time I've done the Sunflower Showdown for K-State, it's at Manhattan. Corner, touchdown, Stevens could see it from a mile away. Using this really as a tune-up game before we head into the Big 12 championship game because that's what's next up for our guys. We win here, we finish off a perfect Big 12 campaign. And then after we get through the Big 12 championship, it'll be the playoffs. I know I'm already looking past the Jayhawks, got into a little bit of trouble earlier in the season for doing just that. But trust me, when you got a team like this, you got to plan for the future. Quick work on these guys, just like a quick strike to Alvera while falling down. 14-0, I'll see you guys back on the bus. End of the third quarter, Jayhawks have managed to score 10 points, but it pales in comparison to our 34. After a glimpse of promise in the 2024 campaign, looks like Jayhawk fans have to expect to go back crashing down to earth. Or just get yourself a coach that doesn't allow the team to squander the momentum they have 
and turn into a pedestrian like team getting handled on the home turf never a good feeling nor good luck jayhawk fans end their season six and six fans go home sad our fans go home happy and ready for the big stage we see a familiar foe in the big 12 championship game at&t stadium west virginia cuna trophy on the line and as it stands in the current college football bracket a lot more on the line if we can ensure this one i think we're looking good for a first round buy offensive line continues to add stars to their name there's four of them and i'm really hoping they show me why they have that i've seen some gripes from the community and some personal gripes here and there every now and then the offensive line plays like a bum no matter what their rating really is definitely a fair complaint i would say especially when i have all 90 pluses on this line i'm expecting 90 plus play what i'm looking at instead is a punt turnover give the ball back to West Virginia. Game is still very much young and a work here in progress. I've noticed a very bad habit of mine lately is to do the snake around, scramble around drill, and then take a 20 yard sack or something out of pocket. Just a tendency we'll need to clean up if we're gonna play a cleaner brand of potato football. Third and four, HB draw, it works out quite well in our favor holding him the three now with the ball back in our hands this is where we should be dangerous get the rock in number one's hands and let him find a wide open diamond in the rough eagles dropped it clamp down defense from west virginia they're putting a number in on us right now and they continue not too often you see this but we're ice cold just taking shots trying to warm up any which way Smythe in one play flips the field and flips the script no longer cold and now at the one Spruce gives us that touchdown in the lead if you could tell where this one was headed West Virginia maintained their momentum despite that strike at the end of the first half we just need to get our name back out there hit up an open receiver in ham call first and goal and score to score i have a select few guys in mind but none other than spruce truce is my main target something has come alive for west virginia i'll tell you that inspired football making things happen doesn't spell good news for the potatoes so we're gonna have to take matters into our own hands put on a move and score bring it within seven. Third and four big play here halfback draw stopped even bigger play called in the last it's fourth and two what's it gonna be with clock winding down quick strike holds on oh man with no time left this is a bummer we're gonna lose to West Virginia in the Big 12 Championship. Mountaineers look disappointed, I don't know why. There you go, look at the scoreboard. They beat us 31-21, what a troublesome bunch. If you couldn't tell from how we were utilizing him, Freddie Spruce won Best Tight End of the Year Award. We'll definitely want to get more out of him in the 2031 college football playoff bracket, taking on Tulsa in round number one. Despite the overall and the glamor and the glitz, something has felt just a little off about this CUNA team compared to yesteryear. 10 wins in a playoff birth for most schools is a major success but for cunic king golden potato standard it feels a little fraudulent i just don't feel like we have it all together to make a distance run no matter what the paper says most of our playmaker options are young so i don't think they fully stepped into their shoes by all means we'll see what they can do in this one quickly to prove my point even further no star receiver or tight end options spruce even won tight end of the year yet I don't see any accolade under his name. We proved we can build a really good offensive line, but that's all for not if we can't get the rest of the pieces on the same page. Thankfully, we came alive here in round one against Tulsa. Everyone's on the same page now. To the tune of that, 13 points for Tulsa, but gotta give credit to the CUNA Kings out here, putting up 24 and not stopping quite yet by all accounts we're walking out of Tulsa with a first round win Shaq Penny dumped them flood with some movement got a wide open spruce trues touchdown now that we're officially advancing past Tulsa we get ourselves a bowl game when it's a playoff version CUNA King team anything goes we step up into the occasion it's been a long time coming for old McDonald but I love to see him get recognized with the program builder archetype and what I love even more at the moment is a playoff game against Michigan State in the Rose Bowl the stage is set for a classic bowl game experience 
we should be in for a good one. Spartans, Potato Kings, let's have some fun. Already testing the waters, showing major faith in this offense. Fourth and 13 converted. Can't stop throwing the ball his way. He is so reliable. Just absolutely love the storyline here. When he was about to transfer, he did not envision himself in this stage as the starter. That's why youngins, I'm always going to advocate and old McDonald's always going to advocate for his players to stick it out. You got to learn. You got to pay your dues. You got to train hard. Do all the right things and you'll get rewarded. Spruce is the definition of that. He's waited his whole career. Brought him in so many years ago and now he gets a starting job. Not only that, he gets tight end of the year and is making splash plays touchdown after touchdown in the Rose Bowl. Did not see this from this guy just last year. Trust the process and usually good things will come. You just got to work hard. The more and more I talk about Spruce, it reminds me of all the other players on the roster right now sitting there just waiting their chance. I could be talking about them to the same tune this next season. For Michigan State, these guys were just underprepared and undermatched, outsized, whatever you want to call it. They didn't have the right secondary or personnel to stop anyone from CUNA, Idaho. Clearly one of the most decisive and blowout results in Rose Bowl history. Not an awful lot of stress coming out of the CUNA side. Our fans knew it, our team knew it. We had this one on wraps. I was doubting our team in the Big 12 championship game and coming into this playoff bracket, but we've been nothing but decisive against Tulsa, Michigan State, now taking on big, bad Alabama. If we can manage to get through them, we'll take on the winner of Stanford, West Virginia, which would be another opportunity at revenge in that Big 12 championship game. For now, it's Fiesta Bowl time, and we're looking at another trophy to the stack. Down 21 to 7 to Alabama. We knew coming into this, this was going to be by far the toughest test. One of the most successful college football programs in the nation. You don't get anything easy against them, which is why we need to take any opportunity we get with favorable positioning to cash in ham at the one. Boom, spruce is lose 21 24 back within three fourth and five taking a serious gamble here and it pays off three minutes left in the fourth quarter it's safe to say it's crunch time and i need all hands on deck just love it when floods work out for flood taking the drag underneath spruce after that flood's gonna do it all by himself spreading them back out yep in front spruce off his back foot there that was a dime time is our friend in this one so let's play with a couple handoffs eagles couldn't get it on the first one so keglar's in maybe this change of pace back can plunge his frame in he does and a turnover for alabama's offense is gonna just about seal this one play and this thing flipped on its head we were down now we're up by four up by two possessions alabama oh how the mighty have fallen Fourth down, no good. On that sweet, sweet note, 35-24. Potato Kings, in fact, have a chance to defend their title. Back-to-back -back is on tap. Unfortunately for West Virginia, they fell at the hands of Stanford, so we'll meet the number one seed in the national championship game. For this monumental occasion, gonna don the golden potato fits. The Kings continue to surprise me. Back-to-back -back appearances. Thought we might have been a little ahead of schedule last season. Definitely did not expect to be here after dropping a couple early blunders and now we get a chance to meet Stanford in the big game college football in the 2032 era is wacky a school from Idaho versus Stanford who is one of the worst teams IRL 2024 heck maybe I'm sleeping on them but I just know they haven't been that good the last couple seasons a lot can change when you're rebuilding a team and you have this much time on your hands did I just see that correctly linebacker James Freeland who just dropped us on the last one has 20 three sacks this season but you can't sack Smythe when he's just too fast starting off our natty championship defense tour with a bang look at all those Stanford Cardinal stickers on the helmet of the quarterback that's actually insane the whole back of his helmet looked red that is a lot of good plays such a neat touch actually because I can look across the line and see some Stanford Cardinals don't have as many stickers as others if anyone knows how to add that to team builder I would have loved to do something Something like that for our spud studs but there's always next series so let me know nine to three ball game the pressure just comes sometimes it comes so fast pause 
not gonna come fast enough on this one. Favorable position and a favorable tight end in Spruce. I love that dude. I think he's quickly cementing himself into one of my all-time favorites for CUNA. Just the story, the run, the national playoffs, the awards, the accolades, everything. In close games like this one against Stanford, he comes out and shows his true colors as a security blanket. Blocker too on special occasions like this. Stanford offense waking up, going back and forth with us, trading these touchdowns. And I don't wanna do this anymore, so I'm just gonna let one fly to Spruce, the big man, he hauls it in. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Sign this man to an NFL team right now. National championship game MVP for me. I'm telling you, if we walk out of here with that dub, give him the praise. Stanford knows how important it is to keep up going for it on fourth and one in the third quarter. Over the middle, I'm surprised he fit that into a window. That's a good quarterback. That's why this receiver also has a lot of stickers. Up by six, a field goal will at least help us get up two possessions. So let's go ahead with a reverse, get some trickery up in here. Did not work. Kind of surprised old McDonald didn't want to take his three points. On fourth down, he's telling his offense to go for it. QB power blown up. Second time's a charm. Got in there 36-24, forcing Stanford to go on every fourth down that comes their way. One more stop and I can officially say national champs. It's in the books. Landry, interception. That's gonna do it. Heroic stand by the linebacker. The young gun says straps. Bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. Let's go. CUNA, Idaho, back-to-back -back national champions. Are these guys out of the gem state finally on the map? The conversation, the radar to be the next true dynasty. Oklahoma's done it, Alabama's done it, Georgia's done it, Old McDonald's now doing it right here in the present. Give it up for the Potato Kings. Remember how I talked about the six phases of potato growth? We're well into our maturity phase and it's time for the harvest, another big win. Nothing gets me more amped up than hoisting up hardware, trophy, especially the one that matters most. This is the squad that did it. These are the guys that made it happen. On that emphatic note, CEO unlocked. The goal of every coach is to get to this pinnacle. Elite head coach now unlocked. Unfortunately, with the points we stockpiled, we can only redeem one of these. Otherwise, we would have been able to redeem two if we just had one more point. Delay Sunday, second chance keeper. I don't need to persuade anyone at this point. Home away from home. Lower stadium effects at rival stadiums. Eh. Able to see other schools at risk players on my school gasoline to start hot one year extension when facing being fired if he's an elite coach i don't know why he's about to get fired chance at instant commit when offering scholarship as their top school i've already seen this in play a little bit but i imagine this helps the odds bundle discount on coach abilities increase all skill group caps by one for rising seniors obviously no wrong answer but with back-to-back -back national champs i believe we'll have a lot of interest and a lot of players will think our school is a dream school. Well earned back at the mountain peak and darn right four star prestige. The CEO NFL Sunday ability would have helped in this one case with Leon Osling declaring for the first round. We'll try to keep him with extremely low persuasion and it actually worked, that's insane. A lot of NFL bound potato kings, Trayvon Beard leading the way in the first round. Leota made some huge plays off the edge, second round snag, two third rounders in Matt Fogg and Pat Knox. Fourth round picks for Hammer and James Willingham. Look at Deron Bland's brother out here getting picked in the fifth round, similar to when he was selected in the NFL draft. Good news, he gets to reunite. And then Chip Coleman, sixth round flyer, good stuff. Surprised there isn't more interest in our team after going back to back natties, but probably just because there isn't room for playing time. And that's a big reason a lot of guys hit the portal. Gideon Boyko over here is one of the best and we're gonna try to recruit him heavily. Top 10 signing class, the rich just get richer. The training results are in and guess what? We're just as elite as before. The running back room continues to elevate. Eagles at 94 overall. 99 speed Romeo Tolton had an offseason to prove why he belongs in the starting conversation. With no spruce, I'm looking at guys like Ham and Estrella to step up. One heck of a physical defensive line, 390 plus players, and linebackers are just insane. Off the charts and so much depth at each position. Probably one of our best batch of cornerbacks as well. CUNY King fans, prepare yourself because after two national playoff championships, we are getting promoted into the SEC. Alabama, Georgia, 
Georgia, watch out. There is a new sheriff in town. You see that, right? It's the SEC badge next to our overall. Once again, huge bravo to these potato kings for what they've accomplished. And now I'll leave you with the sweet, sweet dreams of this roster to dream upon as we take on the SEC in this next season. We're winding down the rebuild, folks. This team builder has been one heck of an experience, and I have enjoyed each step of the way. If you're soaking it up with King Sponge, I highly consider you hit that subscribe button. It means a lot. It makes a world of difference. And as always, let me know what you like, what you want to see next. So many college football bangers on the way. So keep it here. Soak it up with the sponge.